Someone tried to ban you from seeing this Excel practice exam. I had to fight very hard just to be able to bring this back, but it'll all be worth it if it helps you to improve your skill set in Excel and maybe pass that next Excel exam. For the first task in this project, we're going to navigate to a range in the worksheet, and then we're going to delete the contents of that range. So the first thing you have to do is go to the name box drop arrow that's right here, and then click on that to find the range that you want to go to. We want to go to the total a range in this worksheet and it's just this cell right here and then if you're told to delete the contents that's the same as saying clear contents so you can do that in a number of ways you can right click and say clear contents you can press delete on your keyboard you can even press backspace and then enter on your keyboard however you get rid of the value in that cell without actually deleting the cell itself is the right way to delete the contents of that cell now the second task in this project is going to ask us to and change the number formatting. So we're going to change the number formatting of this range right here. And I'm just going to click the first one, press control shift down. So I select all of the values in that column. And then the quickest way to take decimals off of a number is to go to the numbers group in the home tab and just say decrease decimal and just click that twice. So you could get into like the number formatting and you can open up dialog boxes. But if you want to just be really quick about uh, changing the decimal formatting of a number. Just do it here. You might have to add decimals uh, depending on the task, but if we just click this twice, we can get rid of the decimals that we don't need. The third task in this project is going to ask us to remove the table row. So there's a little bit of a trick here. You want to remove the table row, so just the part of the table, but not actually delete the row itself because that'll delete the row outside of the table and that's not what we want. So let's say we want to delete this Abraham person and then we're going to right click and then go to your delete options and then click on table rows. So you should see that whole row disappear once we click table rows and it did. And then we didn't delete the row outside of the table, just the row inside of the table. A lot of the time on these exams, they'll throw an easy function at you, an easy formula, and then a hard one right after that. So We'll do the easy one first. Let's say we want to get the average of this total column and put it in cell M5 here. So we'll start our formula in M5 and every formula we'll start with an equal sign. We'll do equal average and then open parentheses and then I'll start sort of the starting here and then press control shift down. Now just be careful the control shift down uh, option on your keyboard will not work if you have a blank cell. So to get the whole range, I, I press control shift down. Just be careful if you have any blank cells in between, it's only going to go to the next blank cell or blank space. So be careful that you don't have uh, blank spaces in your range that you're trying to get the average from. And then I'll do a closing parentheses and press enter. Although it's it would be tempting to change the formatting of this number and decrease the decimal, if the question on your test doesn't ask you to do that, then don't bother, just leave it alone. And then we'll move to our next task. So we'll go this one. We want to create a unique email with the person's first name and then an email of our choosing. So maybe at patreon.com, uh, something like that, using the concat function. So the concat function will let us join two text strings together. And this is how we're going to do this. So in this cell here, we'll do the concat function. Use concat, not concatenate. Uh, concatenate we used to use. It's a little bit different than concat, but for this one, if we're just joining something, we want the concat function. So concat, open parentheses, and then we'll click on the person's first name. So that'll be the first text string. So we'll separate it with a comma. So now we're on to text two. And the second part, we'll put quotations around this. This will be at uh, patreon.com, something like that. And then closes off with a closing quotation mark, closing parentheses, press enter. And because it's a table, it will automatically copy the formula down. And I'll just stretch this column out, even though it didn't ask us to, just to make sure we see all the members here. And just make sure that's right. So there we go. And now we've joined, that's how you uh, can use the concat function to uh, join two text strings that aren't next to each other and make them next to each other. So there you go. All right, so now we're gonna remove the table functionality from this table. And that's the question that you could run into. So you can click anywhere inside of the table, go to table design, and we're going to change this table into a structure range just by clicking on convert to range. It'll say, are you sure you want to do this? And we say yes. And there we go.
Now this is just a structured range, which would let us do like things like subtotals and things like that, stuff that a table could not do. Okay, so for this last task in the project, we're going to use an Excel feature that allows you to keep the first five rows visible of this worksheet. So the first five rows we're going to keep visible. So if you want to keep the first five rows visible, you don't highlight the first five rows, you actually highlight row six. So row six is what we want to highlight because everything above that will get frozen. So if we're highlighting the first four rows, you would start, you would highlight row five before you do anything. We want to keep the first five rows visible. So we'd actually have to highlight row six and then choose our freeze option. So we're going to go to view and then freeze drop arrow here, freeze pane. So we're going to keep rows and columns visible while the rest of the worksheet scrolls. So now when we say freeze panes, now when we scroll down, row five and up stays frozen as we scroll down the worksheet. I'll have project two ready for you next week at the same time, Tuesday at 10 a.m. But while you're waiting, I don't want you to fail any Excel exam. That's why I want you to check out this video on your screen that'll help you avoid failing any Excel exam because I put together 10 of the most challenging Excel questions you could possibly face on any Excel exam. That'll be in that video. Go check it out on your screen. And I'll see you over there. Bye for now.